A malapropism, also called a malaprop or dogberryism, is the use of an incorrect word in place of a word with a similar sound, resulting in a nonsensical, sometimes humorous utterance. An example is the statement by baseball player Yogi Berra. Texas has a lot of electrical votes, rather than electoral votes. Malapropisms often occur as errors in natural speech and are sometimes the subject of media attention, especially when made by politicians or other prominent individuals. Philosopher Donald Davidson has noted that malapropisms show the complex process through which the brain translates thoughts into language. Humorous malapropisms are the type that attract the most attention and commentary, but bland malapropisms are common in speech and writing. Etymology The word malapropism and its earlier variant, malaprop, comes from a character named Mrs. Malaprop. In Richard Brinsley Sheridan's 1775 play, The Rivals, Mrs. Malaprop frequently misspeaks to comic effect by using words which don't have the meaning that she intends, but which sound similar to words that do. Sheridan presumably chose her name in humorous reference to the word malapropos, an adjective or adverb meaning inappropriate or inappropriately, derived from the French phrase mal a propos, literally poorly placed. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the first recorded use of malapropos in English is from 1630, and the first person known to have used the word malaprop in the sense of a speech error, is Lord Byron in 1814. The synonymous term dogberryism comes from the 1598 Shakespeare play Much Ado About Nothing, in which the character Dogberry utters many malapropisms to humorous effect. Though Shakespeare was an earlier writer than Sheridan, malaprop or malapropism seems an earlier coinage than dogberryism which is not attested until 1836. Distinguishing Features An instance of speech error is called a malapropism, when a word is produced which is nonsensical or ludicrous in context, yet similar in sound to what was intended. Definitions differ somewhat in terms of the cause of the error, some scholars include only errors that result from a temporary failure to produce the word which the speaker intended. Such errors are sometimes called Fay Cutler mal malapropism, after David Fay and Ann Cutler, who described the occurrence of such errors in ordinary speech. Most definitions, however, include any actual word that is wrongly or accidentally used in place of a similar sounding correct word. This broader definition is sometimes called classical malapropism or simply malapropism. Malapropisms differ from other kinds of speaking or writing mistakes, such as egg corns or spoonerisms, and from the accidental or deliberate production of newly made up words. For example, it is not a malapropism to use obtuse, wide or dull, instead of acute, narrow or sharp. It is a malapropism to use obtuse, stupid or slow-witted, when one means abstruse, esoteric or difficult to understand. Malapropisms tend to maintain the part of speech of the originally intended word, according to linguist Jean Aitchison. The finding that word selection errors preserve their part of speech suggests that the latter is an integral part of the word and tightly attached to it. Likewise, like substitutions tend to have the same number of syllables and the same metrical structure the same pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables as the intended word or phrase. If the stress pattern of the malapropism differs from the intended word, unstressed syllables may be detected or inserted, stressed syllables and the general rhythmic pattern are maintained. Examples from fiction. The fictional Mrs. Malaprop in Sheridan's play, The Rivals, utters many malapropisms. In Act 3, Scene 3, she declares to Captain Absolute, Sure, if I reprehend anything in this world, it is the use of my oracular tongue and a nice derangement of epitaphs. This nonsensical utterance might, for example, be corrected to, 
If I apprehend anything in this world, it is the use of my vernacular tongue and a nice arrangement of epithets. Although these are not the only words that can be substituted to produce an appropriately expressed thought in this context, and commentators have proposed other possible replacements that work just as well. Other malapropisms spoken by Mrs. Malaprop include illiterate him quite from your memory instead of obliterate, and she's as headstrong as an allegory on the banks of the Nile instead of alligator. Malapropisms appeared in many works before Sheridan created the character of Mrs. Malaprop. William Shakespeare used them in a number of his plays, almost invariably spoken by comic, ill-educated, lower-class characters. Mistress Quickly, the innkeeper, associate of Falstaff in several Shakespeare plays, is a regular user of malapropisms. In Much Ado About Nothing, Constable Dogberry tells Governor Leonardo, our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, i.e. apprehended two suspicious persons. Act 3, Scene 5. Malapropism was one of Stan Laurel's comic mannerisms. In Sons of the Desert, for example, he says that Oliver Hardy is suffering a nervous shakedown rather than breakdown, calls the exalted ruler of their group the exhausted ruler, and says that he and Oliver are like two peas in a pot. In the music box, he inadvertently asks a policeman, Don't you think you're bounding over your steps? Meaning overstepping your bounds. Which Hardy corrected, causing the cop to get more angry at him. British comedian Ronnie Barker also made great use of deliberate malapropisms in his comedy, notably in such sketches as his appeal on behalf of the Loyal Society for the relief of sufferers from piss pronunciation which mixed malapropisms and garbled words for comic effect, including news of a speech which gave us a few well-frozen worms, i.e. well-chosen words, in praise of the society. Ring Lardner used malapropisms extensively for comic effect. For example, in his short story, The Young Immigrants, the four-year-old narrator repeatedly refers to a bride and groom as the bride and glum. The episode entitled E. Henry Thripshaw's Disease of Monty Python's Flying Circus features a man who speaks in malapropisms, among other incorrect verbiage. It begins with the sketch, the man who says words in the wrong order, the doctor trying to capitalize on the discovery of his case's malapropism, naming the disease after himself, and ends with the next sketch, Thripshaw's Disease, in which a review of the films based on the disease is instead scenes from the Polish film Knights of the Teutonic Order. Believing the first film to miss the point, Dr. Thripshaw's disease, he remakes the film nearly identical to the first version, but with the addition of a medical office visit. Archie Bunker, a character in the American TV sitcom All in the Family, is also known for malapropisms. He calls Orthodox Jews off the docks Jews and refers to the women's lubrication movement rather than liberation some real-life example. Malapropisms do not occur only as comedic literary devices. They also occur as a kind of speech error in ordinary speech. Examples are often quoted in the media. Welsh conservative leader Andrew Davies encouraged the Conservative Party conference to make breakfast, Brexit, a success. Bertie Ahem, former Atisha of Ireland, warned his country against upsetting the apple tart, apple cart, of his country's economic success. Former Chicago mayor Richard J. Daly referred to a tandem bicycle as a tantrum bicycle and made mention of Alcoholics Unanimous instead of Alcoholics Anonymous. Former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott once claimed that no one is the suppository of wisdom, i.e. repository or depository. Similarly, as reported in New Scientist, an office worker had described a colleague as a vast suppository of information. The worker then apologized for his Miss Marpyism, i.e. malapropism. New Scientist voted this as possibly the first time anyone had uttered a malapropism for the word malapropism itself. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry had been known to commonly utter malapropisms. For example, he describes states as lavatories of innovation and democracy instead of laboratories. 
During a Senate hearing, Philippine Presidential Communications Assistant Secretary Mocha Usen stumbled on the legal phrase right against self-incrimination by invoking her right against self-discrimination instead. And former world heavyweight champion boxer Mike Tyson, upon being asked about his next plans moments after losing in a world title fight with Lennox Lewis, declared that I might fade to Bolivian instead of oblivion. Now there's some philosophical implications. In his essay, A Nice Derangement of Epitaphs, philosopher Donald Davidson suggests that malapropisms reveal something about how people process the meanings of words. He argues that language competence must not simply involve learning a set meaning for each word and then rigidly applying those semantic rules to decode other people's utterances. Rather, he says, people must also be continually making use of other contextual information to interpret the meaning of utterances and then modifying their understanding of each word's meaning based on those interpretations. 